Let me urge you, dear friends, share the gospel. It's time now. Jesus said, occupy until I come. Let me share with you this video, dear friends, and, and share the gospel. Share this website, hediedforyou.com. Take the home page and scroll down the home page from top to bottom, and it will help to introduce the gospel to lost people. There's a link on there also for rapture and tribulation signs. So let me urge you to share the gospel. Use this website. And here is a message, dear friends. Prepare for eternity. We urge each person to realize they have an eternal soul. Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul? And this is the reality. As a human being, you were created with a spirit that will exist forever. And you cannot change that. That's part of being made in the image of God. You were made to live forever. Colossians chapter 1 makes it clear. Verse 16, you were created by Jesus and for Jesus. And if you're missing Jesus, you're missing everything. And you have a huge problem. And that is, you have sinned. That separates you from God. That is, if you have not been born again, you have sin that is separating you from fellowship with God. You have a problem, and that is you were born in sin, have a nature of sin, selfishness, pride, greed, envy, lust. You were born in sin and lived in sin, selfishness, and you love the sin that God hates. And in the end, the wages of sin is death. And sin brings misery. It brings depression. It brings bondage. Sin brings death. God is a holy God, and He is the judge. It's appointed a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. God has given us law. God's law is eternal. God's holy nature is eternal. Judgment is coming. We have broken the law of God. Hell is real. Jesus made it very clear. Hell is separation from God for eternity. You have an eternal spirit. And you cannot change that. And this is the good news. Jesus Christ was born without sin. You and I were born in sin, have lived in sin, and loved the sin that God hates, but Jesus Christ was born of a virgin as part of God's plan that He would come and be born without sin. Jesus lived without sin. He died to pay the penalty for your sin. That was the Father's plan. Jesus Christ is called the Lamb of God. He died on Passover, took the Passover bread. He's Gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body. He died on Passover because the lamb died on Passover. And the blood of the lamb was put on the door post to, as, as a symbol that judgment was passing over them. Jesus is the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus died to pay the penalty for your sins. He is the perfect substitute. Jesus was punished for your sin. No other person in the world could ever be punished for your sin in the sight of a holy God to have a holy God accept you or forgive you but Jesus was punished for your sins he shed holy blood to cleanse your sin Jesus shed holy blood to be your priest he didn't offer a lamb he didn't offer a goat he didn't offer a bull he offered his own holy body as a sacrifice and that's what you need you need the substitute who died for you. And Jesus is the only priest you need. He not, he not only offered the sacrifice of his own body, but he rose from the dead and he is the living priest and he will be your personal priest if you trust in him. He will cleanse you by his blood. Every other priest has sin and cannot save. Every other person in the history of the world has sin. And cannot save, cannot die for you, cannot be a substitute for you. But Jesus Christ had no sin. 
He paid that penalty for you. Your sin must have a penalty, and Jesus paid it. He suffered. He was punished for your sin, and he rose from the dead, just as he promised. He told them on the third day, I'll rise from the dead. They put the stone in front of the tomb. They put Roman guards in front of the tomb. You have to see the, the movie Risen. It's a beautiful movie about the resurrection of Jesus. Just as Jesus promised, he rose from the dead. He conquered sin. He conquered death. He conquered hell. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved that he is the Son of God. He proved that he is the Savior. He proved that the blood that he shed was shed for your sins. And dear friends, the tomb was empty. On the third day, the tomb was empty because he rose from the dead. And he showed them his hands and his side. He proved it. The Shroud of Turin, I believe, is forensic evidence. You can check the website, shroud.com, or check that website, he died for you.com, and scroll down. There's a section on the resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved that he can save you. And let's ask this question What have you done with Jesus? When you put your trust in Jesus, this is the blessing you will receive. He will give you his righteousness. You're a sinner, deserving of judgment, deserving of punishment, deserving of hell. But when you put your trust in Jesus, he becomes your sacrifice and the righteousness that he has, that he offered on the cross, he will give it to you. It will be imputed to you. It'll be, a, it'll be put into your account, his righteousness. You give, Jesus, you give Jesus your sin, and he will give you his righteousness. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light and won't come to the light. Dear friends, it's time to quit clinging to the darkness. Turn from the darkness that's keeping you from the love that God showed sinners on the cross. Get humble before God. Have godly sorrow for your sin. By grace, dear friends, you can be truly sorry for your sin. By grace, dear friends, the Lord impart to you faith to know that Jesus is enough. You can't add to what Jesus did. You can't add your works. You can't earn it. You can't you can't follow rituals for it. You can't be baptized for it. You, you must trust in Jesus. By grace, you can be truly sorry for sin. By grace, you can be saved. That is transferred out of darkness into light. By grace, you can be forgiven of all your sins. Delivered from the future of having to pay the penalty for your own sins. Delivered from not being able to fellowship with the God that created you. By grace, you can have a new heart. By grace, you can be born again, changed on the inside. Because Jesus rose from the dead, the same power that raised him from the dead will raise your dead spirit to a new life. Place your faith in Jesus. He paid it all. By grace, you can fall out of love with sin. By grace, you can fall in love with Jesus, dear friends. You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. You can receive it as a gift. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So come to new life. Your dead spirit will come to life by faith in Jesus. Religion is man trying to work his way to God. True. The true gospel is God coming down to man and inviting you to come to faith in, with faith in him of what he did for you. Not what you can do for him, but what he did for you. Trust in him. And then come to life. And that fellowship you'll have with God will be life-changing.
John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Dear friends, today is the day of salvation for you if you will put your trust in Jesus. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Dear friends, today is the day to put your faith and trust. Not in your ability to earn it or your ability to climb the ladder to get to Jesus. But today is the day, dear friends, to put your faith in what Jesus did for you on the cross and the truth that he rose from the dead and the faith in his promise that he will impart to you life. You know, when the Jews eat Passover uh, a meal, God told them in Exodus chapter 12 to eat it with shoes on their feet because God had made a promise to them that they were going to leave Egypt, they were going to be free. And so they eat that Passover bread with shoes on their feet. And that's the way you need to receive Jesus. That is, believing the promise. Just as they wore shoes on their feet, believing the promise they were going to be free and leave Egypt, you receive Jesus by faith, believing the promise that he will forgive you, believing the promise that he will give you life eternal and peace and grace to be accepted. Jesus said to the church of Laodicea in Revelation 3, Verse 19 and 20, he said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And yes, he said that to the church. I think it's, it's a good verse for you to consider. Open your heart. Open your heart to Jesus. And he will send the Holy Spirit to come in. God bless you.